Hello everyone. My name is Saber Jalassi and I'm a Senior Technical Director at Blizzard Animation. My current job consists of creating tools and scripts for lighting, compositing and effects department, as well as working with production on solving challenging problems. I'm also a Houdini instructor currently teaching an eight-week course uh, with CG Master Academy and producing various other online tutorials. And I spend a lot of my free time doing side projects using Houdini and Arnold and various other tools and you can check some of my work if you go to vimeo.com slash sabervfx and today i'm going to be talking about creating a custom grooming system in houdini from scratch and we're going to be uh, first creating the solution to produce a high-end vfx uh, uh, result and then we're going to take that and convert it to uh, uh, for real-time rendering using two techniques we're going to be uh, creating cards auto-generating cards with texture and passing that to uh, real-time rendering and we're going to use also uh, NVIDIA hair works to to uh, render the hair in real time and the first thing we're going to be talking about is creating the actual grooming system in Houdini and Houdini 16 has a lot of new hair tools and I highly encourage you guys to explore those and use them in production and the reason I wanted to create the system from scratch is to prototype um, something and basically show you guys how you can solve a very challenging problem with very little uh, scripting in Houdini and then we're going to take that to the next level and auto generate cards uh, with texture and pass that to in games and then we're going to look at the hair work system so the first thing we're going to be talking about is the hair grooming for VFX and what do we need to achieve this we need three things we need to be able to interpolate the hair and generate and expand the hair count from a given set of curves let's say we have 100 guide curves we need to be able to generate 100,000 new curves that properly interpolate between all those uh, guides and then we need to be able to clump the hair and layer the clumps so we can have big uh, large medium and small clumps and we need to be able to add variation to the hair and so the first thing we need to to talk about is the interpolation system which I, th I think is the most challenging problem uh, in a hair system in general and um, my starting point is going to be this I have a geometry and uh, guide curves these were created by Tarkin Sarim it's uh, a great groomer and he was kind enough to provide me this data to work with and uh, for the time being we're going to ignore the geometry and only focus on the curves and what I'm going to uh, do in here is I'm going to delete all the points except the points at the root of each curve. And that will give me a point cloud that I can then mesh and generate what we call a connectivity mesh. And by uh, isolating all the roots and running a Tudrahalize node in, in Houdini, we will be able to connect all the points using triangles. And this is the resulting mesh. And with this mesh, I will be able to know uh, the neighboring curve curves so I can take this triangle for example and know that I have three curves and each of these curves I will be able to know the neighboring curves for them as well so this is what the connecti connectivity mesh is, is used for and I'm going to uh, delete everything and just focus on one triangle so I'm gonna isolate one triangle here and I'm going to find all the three curves that are placed at each of these points and what we need to do is we need to uh, create curves here that are facing uh, along the surface normal and we need to interpolate them so that we fill all the space using uh, with properly interpolated curves and so what we need what we're going to be using for that is we're going to create a very centric coordinate on that triangle and with this very centric coordinate we'll be able to know at each point of the surface how far we are from each of these points and we know that we have a curve at each of these points so if we create one here we will be able to know how much uh, how much we need to uh, blend between this versus this for the versus this and if we use that information will we will be able to properly interpolate between all these curves and I'm going to use the UV coordinate to generate this uh, very central coordinate data that we need and uh, you can google it uh, if you if you want to learn more about the very central coordinate but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take point zero and give it a UV coordinate of zero zero point one and give it a UV coordinate of one one and point uh, sorry point one give it a UV coordinate of zero one which will place it here and point two will we will place it here by giving it a UV coordinate of one one um, and so this is the UV coordinate of this triangle and now we have the uh, 
two coordinate that we need for the very central coordinate, we need the third one. And we can easily compute that by taking one and subtracting the uv uh, dot x and uv dot y. And that will give us the third uh, information that we need and you can see here I'm using the color to preview the uh, UV coordinate or the very central coordinate and we can see that we have a <clears throat> nice uh, transition between the various uh, points here and that's our very central coordinate and so what we're going to do is we're going to scatter a lot of points on this uh, triangle here and by doing that they will automatically inherit all the sur all the attributes on the surface all the point attributes on the surface and if we then take a curve and copy it uh, on these curves, on these points, they will also, the curve will also inherit the, all the information from the points. And uh, what we need in this case is we need the very central coordinate. So if we loop over each curve and use that very central coordinate to blend shape between um, uh, these three curves, we will be able to properly fill in the space between all these. Uh, we will be able to properly fill the space with uh, uh, properly inter interpolated curves. And so if we take our original uh, input, this is the guide curves with the triangulated mesh, we can loop over each triangle and repeat the same operation. And by doing that, we can easily fill in uh, the triangles with properly interpolated curves. And in this case, I've generated uh, a version with 1000 curves, 1K, and another version with 3,000 curves and the high-res version with 86,000. And you can see we've successfully filled in all the space using um, uh, properly interpolated curves. And I'm going to show uh, the Houdini setup uh, for this. So this is my starting point. I have the the guides here with the with the geometry. I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm not. I don't need the geometry here, so I'm going to simply focus on the guides and I'm going to isolate all the root points and I'm going to generate the triangulation mesh that I need. And so that's our mesh. And then we're going to scatter some points on that on the on this mesh and then loop over each triangle here. And each time we isolate the triangle, we also isolate the curves that belong to that triangle. And I have a curve here that I'm going to copy on these points and then interpolate between all those. So let me show you the result here. I have a for each loop that loops over each triangle. And every time we uh, isolate the triangle, the points that are uh, placed on that triangle and the three curves. So if I dive inside here, you can see we have the curve, the triangle. And this is where I generate the very central coordinate that we need. This, uh, I'm setting the UV coordinate here, and uh, the last uh, the last value is uh, the uh, the third value is we're computing it here by subtracting one minus UV dot x and UV dot y, and we're previewing the barycentric coordinate as colors, and um, on the other side I'm isolating all the curves, uh, all the three curves that are placed at each point, and then I'm using that very central coordinate to interpolate between that those uh, three curves and that gave me the result I need <clears throat> and I've run this um, and I've run this right now with how much points uh, let's see 5,000 curves so this one will generate 5,000 curves and I can simply increase the points here and that will give me more curves and I've already done that I'm going to show you the result which I showed already so this is the final result and you can see uh, the original curves and this is the three the 1k uh, 5k and this is the 86k version and if we zoom in you can see that we have very nice distribution of the points and they're properly interpolating between all the curves so we're done with the interpolation uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, let me so the next thing we're going to talk about is the actual uh, clumping and so here I'm showing an image with large clumps and small clumps and I'm using this noise map to blend between these two and this is the final result. And I'm going to show a video to explain the clumping effect that we want to create. So this is my starting point. These are the original curves. And what I want to do is I want to take um, uh, a second set of curves and tell, have these guides find the nearest curve uh, close to them the nearest curve and try to blend shape toward that and we're going to use this linear 
ramp here which starts uh, zero at the bottom and one at the tip so zero at the root and one at the tip and we're going to use that as a multiplier to how much we blend between this curve and its neighbor and so if we if i hit play you can see here i'm using the slider and i'm, I'm basically blend shaping between the these guides and uh, their neighbors and so we want to learn how to to create that from scratch and if we if we think about it if we take one curve uh, it is made of multiple points and each point has an xyz coordinate and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to pack all these xyz coordinates of all the points into a, a long uh, string you can you can use arrays for this but at that time i didn't get them to work and i think they're in a much better state now and but in this case i'm going to simply use python to take uh, the XYZ coordinate of all these points and simply create a string. And so this is the XYZ coordinate of the first point, the second point, third point, and I'm going to uh, do that for all the curves. And if we run this operation on the 3K curves, I'm going to run the packing so each, each, string, each curve has that string attribute that represents all the points. We can transfer that information from these curves into the high res version. And the easiest way to transfer, do the transfer, is to delete all the points except the roots because this will give us the best uh, result. And so this is the 3K um, um, version. And with that string attribute, I can, once I have it as a one uh, point attribute, I can delete all the points and still have my attribute. So the, this point here has that string attribute, and we know the, uh, how the curve looked like. Uh, before so we have that information we have the all the details that we need about the curve and so I'm going to transfer this to the high res uh, curves and once I do that I can loop over the 86,000 curves and unpack that attribute so once we transfer this I can say for uh, all these curves here go get that string attribute and unpack it and this is the Python script um, for for doing that this is very simple it's very pa uh, basic um, uh, Python Python code here and by doing that now each of these curves know has the, the information about the curve that it can blend to and so what I'm going to do uh, show next is uh, the result of the high-res curves and I'm trying I'm, I'm blend shaping between the high-res curves and the goal the the data that we just transferred and i'm using this uh, ramp here that starts zero at the bottom and one at the tip to basically multiply how much uh, we're blending towards the, the the clumps and i've used a, um, a six uh, sorry a three thousand or five thousand uh, curves here and that's exactly how much clumps i have and this is very powerful because i can decide exactly how much clumps i will get and the other um, uh, a very powerful feature is that if you look at these curves there they have nothing to do with this they're independent and this gives me uh, a, uh, a great control of over the shape of the clumps so I can decide uh, the um, how the, the the clump itself will look like uh, rather than just having something from the hair itself and if you if you if we look closely here we'll see that we have different size of clumps as well and this is a very powerful technique but I didn't uh, explore it uh, in this case, but you can see it's happening here. So what we can do with this is we can take the, uh, the 3000 curves and modify them so we can control the shape of the clumps themselves. And um, this, I used this version to generate the, I think 3000 3, uh, clumps, and I've used the 1000 curves to do the same thing to generate bigger clumps. And here, here is a preview of that. And you can see I'm using the ramp here to decide how much I blend toward those guides. And this is the 1000 curve. I'm previewing them as uh, wires. And you can see we're getting some very interesting clumps. And so we, we have our clumping now. And all we need to do is we need to be able to uh, mix between them. So uh, the next thing is we're going to generate a noise map. So this is a lar the large clump done using the 1000 curves. And this is the small clump done using the 3000 curves. And here I'm using a noise map to blend between these two, uh, these two results. And I can also use a, 
uh, different colors uh, other than white and that will interpolate between these two as well so you can generate even different si uh, clump that uh, is mixed uh, is a mix between these two and I'm going to show the Houdini uh, graph for this and so the I'm starting with the the high res this is the high res curves here and I have the 3000 curves and this is how much clumps I have and the next thing is I'm going to do the packing of the attributes so all these curves here I'm going to pack all the point data so we know we can uh, recreate the curve later on and I'm going to delete all the points except the root so we have that a string attribute that contains the position of the curves and I'm going to isolate the roots of the 86,000 curves and I'm going to transfer that attribute and once I do that I can I can unpack it um, let's one second once I transfer that packed uh, string attribute it can unpack it on the high-res uh, curves and this is the result that I'm going to show um, this is the, re the result in action and this is running in real time and it's it's running this on 86,000 curves and being able to do this in real time is very powerful and you can see how I can change the clump uh, shape along the uh, the curve along the curve length so you can see here I'm not clumping anything at the at the root but I can increase that easily so I use the uh, 3000 here to generate this version and then the 1000 to generate the big clumps and I and then simply generated a noise map which is this one and use that to blend between the various positions you can see we have a mixture of uh, big uh, large and small clumps and so the next thing we uh, want to do is we want to uh, add some randomization to the hair so it's it's super easy to do this in Houdini we simply we can use any point vop to add any noise but uh, I have two deformers that I want to talk about and the first one is the uh, the length variation and all I'm doing here you can see this is the original result and this is the second uh, after the length variation I'm simply taking the last point of all the curves and I'm offsetting it along the tangent of the curve so we have a tangent information available to us and all these curves and we can take the last CV and push it uh, out and inward to vary the length of the curves and <clears throat> because we have that uh, we have the clump information, the clump guides, we can do something very powerful. We can create a twist deformer easily. So here I have uh, some curves to illustrate this and this is the guide, the guide clump for those curves. And all these curves, they know about this information. It's placed somewhere here. This is just a preview, but it's inside this uh, these curves and each one of these curves know about that curve so we can construct a uh, an ax uh, an axis that is uh, where the center is the clump guide and the point that we're going to deform is is the point itself and so by doing that we can easily do something like this by creating uh, by using a matrix and uh, generating a uh, 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 quaternion we can easily rotate the points along that axis and have this kind of uh, twisting effect easily and so this is uh, uh, I'm multiplying the result along the length of the curve as well so you can control that and I'm adding I'm gonna add a second one here to uh, even make more complex shapes and so this is running on a, a simple example and I'm gonna show it running on the actual guide so here I've isolated few clumps and you can see that because we have that information about the uh, guide clump, we can easily do the twisting here uh, on the on the guides. And I think that's pretty much it. I'm going to show a result with the deformer on and off. And so this is without deformation. And this is with uh, the twisting, the length variation, and various other uh, point deformers. And I'm going to show it in Houdini. So it's uh, it's easier to see so this is the final result with all the deformation added and uh, I had to resample the curve so I have more points if we zoom in you can see the twisting effect here and there is a lot of uh, 
other deformers as well. It's very simple point deformers. We can see we have the length variation and I'm going to show the original result with no deformers, which, which is this one. So we've, we've successfully created the, um, the clumping. Uh, we've successfully created the interpolation, the clumping and the variation. And I'm going to uh, show a render of this done using Houdini uh, mantra. And I'm using the default hair shader here and a very simple light rig and you can see we have the high end uh, the high res uh, grooming here so the next thing we want to talk about we're going to talk about is we're going to take this uh, result and see how we can transfer it to real-time rendering and there is two techniques for that there is the card technique with texture and there is the nvidia hair work system so we're going to focus on the uh, card system and what we need for that is we need to generate Second. So the, what we need for that is we need to generate cards geometry uh, that nicely flow through the hair ge uh, hair curves, and then we need to give those cards textures. But in this case, we're not gonna randomly give them texture in Photoshop. We're going to actually use the high res hair and use Mantra to capture the texture details, and then we're going to uh, pack the data and pass it to real-time rendering. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the creating the cards themselves. And this is the result that we're going to be uh, after. Uh, these cards were auto-generated from the high-res hair and uh, we're going to look at how to do that. So if we if we look at the hair itself, um, we can, uh, what I want to do is I want to cluster it so that I can uh, work with a uh, cluster a big clump at one time and generate a card for that. I don't want a card per curve. I want to group each neighboring curves together, let's say every 300 curves, and then create a card for those. And so the easiest way uh, uh, to do the clustering in this case, or the thing that gave me the best result, is to isolate the tips of all the curves and then cluster those, and then copy that result back into the hair. So now I have clustering done on the tip and this, can, uh, this will give me the result that I want. And so if we take one cluster, um, in this case, and uh, look at and, and see how we can create the, the geometry that nicely flows through the, this cluster. And what I'm going to do is I need to find the curve that always travels at the center of the cluster itself. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to isolate all the points at the root and all the points at the tip. And uh, once I have that, I'm going to average all those points, all the points at the root and all the points at the tip. And that will give me two points. What I'm, uh, what I'm then going to do is I'm going to find the curves that are closest to these two points. And that will give me two curves. And these curves are the curves that uh, nicely flow through the center. Uh, once one of them starts at the root and one of them ends at the tip. And I'm going to, I don't need two curves, I only need one. And I'm going to blend between these two using that value the that starts zero at the bottom and one at the tip. And so we have that linear um, uh, uh, gradient. I'm going to use that to blend between these two curves. And that will give me one curve. And if I loop over all these clusters, if I loop over all these cluster and run that operation, we will be able to generate, find the curves that nicely travels through the, the cluster. But this is not enough for us to create the geometry that will nicely flow the, uh, through the curves. We only have uh, uh, the curve data. We need to find the orientation of the card. And for that, I'm going to take the hair, the head geometry, and I'm going to create um, uh, some kind of uh, a sphere around it, that uh, a geometry that, that wraps around the hair. And so I took a sphere and I ray projected it onto the hair, onto the head, and then I smoothed that out. And this, if I take the, uh, the normal of that surface and transfer it to the hair, I will get the, uh, the two products. I need to know the orientation of the surface that I'm going to be creating. So here I'm taking all the curves and I'm taking the approximated surface that we've created and I'm transferring the normals. So our curves have the normal uh, information and this is the normal transfer from the surface and each curve has the tangent which flows through the curve and if I compute the cross product between those two I will get the vector that I need to extrude this card and so 
I'm going to simply run an extrude operation and that will give me um, the extrude operation will use this vector and that will give me the card that I need and if I run this uh, operation on all the curves I will be able to generate these cards and so this is for the uh, for the card creation process and I'm going to show how it is done in uh, in Houdini so this is the original curves the original high-res hair and I'm going to uh, cluster it using that that uh, by isolating the tip and uh, cop uh, doing the clustering on the tip so here I'm doing that you can see I have the cluster information and uh, now we have successfully clustered the hair so we can isolate one cluster at a time and work on it so in this case I have this this guy here and I'm going to isolate the points at the root and the point at the tip so these two and for each one of those I'm going to find the point at the center so these are the root I'm going to average all the points and that will give me the point at the center and then I'm going to find the curve closest to that and so I can I can do that and then this is the curve closest to the to that point and I'm going to do the same thing for the other points and that will give me a second curve and then I will I use that ramp to blend between the the two curves so this is the root curve this is the tip curve and I'm going to um, blend between them and now we have the curve uh, that we need and we have the tangent information and so we need the uh, the normal from the surface so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take that the head geometry and this is the uh, uh, sphere projected onto the head and I'm going to transfer the normals from the surface onto the uh, the curve itself so you can see here we have the normal and we have the tangent I'm going to simply compute the cross product and then run an extrude operation on it and this will give me the card that I need and if I run this operation on all the cards I will generate the cards that I need cool so the next thing we want to do is we don't want to we don't want to texture the texture these in Photoshop we want to use the high-res uh, hair and we want to capture the details from the high-res uh, curves and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate uh, we're going to create the texture this is the result of the texture and I'll explain in a second what is this uh, if we uh, look at the cluster we can isolate the high-res curves and the card that we've generated and you can see that the card nicely flows through the curve and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use mantra and shoot reflection rays from the surface point along the normals along the surface normal and whenever they hit uh, the curve whenever they hit something they're going to reflect it back so I'm going to use mantra I'm going to shoot reflection rays that starts from um, the surface uh, position and travels along the normal and if I do that I will be able to reflect all this information but this is only on one side so I'm going to also do it on the other side by inverting the normals and shooting the rays back again so I'll have uh, two reflection happening and if we run this and bake the result into texture we will be able to do to create this and this is the reflection of the the curves onto the card and I'm baking this result the reflection onto UV in UV space uh, of that of the card because they are nerve surfaces and they have uh, UV perfect UV coordinate and while I'm doing this I can also query any extra information I need so whenever the ray hits the uh, these curves I can query the information back so in this case I have generated a random hair color and uh, this is the result uh, I also have the surface normals uh, reflected and these are from the uh, I've from the result that we transferred here and then uh, I'm also computing the uh, uh, the distance so if a ray travels from here to here I it will return the distance of how far it had to travel to reach this point and this one will return for example 1 and this one will return 0.5 and this one will return 0.2 and I can do it on the other side as well and this will give me how far the ray had to travel to reflect that point and it can use this in real time to do what we call a pixel displacement to give that card its volume back in real time 
And I'm also computing uh, a, an occlusion pass and I, we have the tangent information on the curve. So I'm also reflecting that and I can use this to shift the anisotropic specular in real time. And so if we run this on all the cards, um, we will end up with 250 cards. That's how much uh, clusters I have. And it's a lot to take all these cards and assign them, each one of them a texture uh, for real time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new space where I take all the cards, the 250 uh, cards, and pack them into one UV space. And uh, this is the result of packing those textures. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the original UV coordinate, UV space of that texture to read in the texture. And then I'm going to write it back in into uh, this using this new UV space. And this way I can assemble, I can pack all the textures into one uh, one file. And I did this. Um, this is the reflection of all the cards and packing them again. And this is the reflection of all the cards uh, 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 textures and I'm creating an 8 by 8k uh, an 8k image that contains all the cards uh, textures and then I'm going to export the cards as an FBX or an OBJ uh, to Marmoset or real time you can use uh, any you can use unity you can use uh, unreal the easiest for me was to use um, Marmoset because they have uh, a great shader that I was able to get a decent result with. So I'm going to save this file into a TIFF and I'm going to export the geometry of all the cards with the new UV space, uh, the packed UV space. And then I'm also going to pack all the other AUVs so I don't want to lose that. So I'm creating, I'm also creating uh, a separate file for each of these guys. And this is the result of using the geometry uh, with the texture rendered in Marmoset. And this is running uh, uh, real time and I was able to get 60 FPS using a, a 680 GTX which is uh, very old and this has occlusion uh, translucency and all kinds of uh, uh, um, real time rendering features um, and I think GI as well and you can see I've used the subsurface shader here and you can see the result by simply plugging in the textures and I've used the anisotropic um, a texture that we created the tangent information to shift the specular here and I think I used the randomization also to very few things. Uh, I was not able to use the pixel displacement um, data they've created but I know that Unreal has it so I'm not an expert in uh, real-time rendering but this is the result that I was able to get by simply plugging in the texture and so we've successfully created uh, We've successfully auto-generated cards from the high-res hair, and we've successfully auto-generated textures for the hair. And so um, this is basically a new approach that we can take to generate hair for games, and we can adopt a high-end uh, uh, grooming system and then have Houdini automatically generate the uh, real-time version, the cards and texture for us to use. And so I think that covers the cards and textures. And the next thing we want to talk about is we're going to uh, look at transferring this data to NVIDIA Hairworks as well. And it's uh, pretty straightforward. All we need to do is we need to generate a lower uh, a lower res version of the hair instead of 86,000. Uh, I'm going to generate the 10K version. And NVIDIA Hairworks uh, require a connectivity mesh to for it to work properly because it's going to expand the hair and it needs to know the how the hair is connected. So we're going to look at how to create the connectivity mesh. And then we're going to import all the data into Maya and export it uh, to NVIDIA Hairworks. Uh, there is only a plugin for Maya and, and uh, 3ds Max, so I had to go uh, through, through Maya in this case to export the data that I need. And so for the 10K version, I'm going to take the 86,000 curves, the high res, and I'm going to generate a random number uh, per primitive that is uh, that goes from zero to one, and then I can use uh, a uh, an if an if statement if the value of that randomization is lower than zero point one one, uh, keep the primitive and delete everything else. And this way, I will be able to get the let's say ten percent or twenty percent or uh, any percentage I, I need from the from the curves. So this is our ten k version. And then for the connectivity mesh, we're going to delete all the points except the points at the root. And I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to create a uh, UV coordinate using uh, spherical mapping. 
and I'm going to use the triangulate 2D with uh, uh, and give it the UV information, the UV attribute to connect these points, and that will give me the triangulate uh, the connectivity mesh that NVIDIA Hairworks needs. And so I'm going to export the curves um, as an alembic and this uh, the connectivity mesh as well as an alembic into uh, and import that into Maya. And so this is the result. And all we have to do is uh, use the Hairworks menu and create the Hairworks node here. And I um, and we need to create one join for the Hairworks to work. Uh, but it's it's very self-explanatory in the documentation. It's very easy to do this process. And then I've exported this into, um, into uh, an APX project and loaded it in the NVIDIA Hairworks uh, standalone. It's called uh, Artist Tools. And this is the, uh, the 10,000 curves running in real time. And you can see that uh, we can expand the hair count, so I have 97,000 here. And uh, this is playing in real time on a 980 mobile version, and um, we've successfully exported the, all the data uh, that NVIDIA Hairworks needs uh, from Houdini. And uh, the, the portion where, the step where we created auto-generated cards and textures, you can do that on uh, any high-res hair, any if you have any curves that you want to process them in Houdini, you can definitely do that. You don't have to create the hair in Houdini. And you can also use this uh, Houdini to generate the data for NVIDIA Hairworks. And uh, you can see here there is a lot of um, attributes that we can play with to uh, give the hair uh, its uh, physics, uh, the correct physics. And here I'm using, uh, I'm adding a wind with uh, uh, some noise and you can see that it's running in real time and i think that's pretty much it for the for the talk uh thank you very much for watching and if you have any questions feel free to email me at uh, my email address sabervfx.com uh, uh sorry sabervfx at gmail.com thank you for watching and talk to you soon Bye bye